My name is Bart, and I'm a Watto architect. I'm going to talk about a small solution to the big problem of climate change, and I think this solution is floating buildings. But first, I'm going to talk about why it's no surprise that the Dutch guy is talking about this. And I will explain how this Dutch person got lost here in Tainan. To understand that, we have to go back 351 years ago. And Tainan was actually a Dutch town. We were with about 2,000 of us blonde-haired or red-haired guys. And we were trading within a harbor here, a trading post. And all things were quite fine. We brought a lot of innovations here. We brought lamp oil to have light at the night. It was all quite useful. And I think for everybody in this room who is a little bit taller than his or her neighbor, I suspect that your grand-grand-grandmother had a crush on my grand-grand-grandfather. <laughs> um, so I think we were doing a good thing here until one dusty morning. Some pirates came into town. There's nothing wrong about pirates, because I think the Dutch were sort of a pirate too. But the problem was he brought about 25,000 of his friends. So we were outnumbered, one in ten. There was no chance of really winning that. So, we had to fight. We went to our fortress, Fort Zeelandia. You may know it, called Fort Anping by now. And one in ten outnumbered. It still took about nine months. There was no way of this pirate defeating us, actually. But after nine months, the harbor needed maintenance. It's a sandy bay, so if you don't maintain the bay, it's just useless. And our big ships couldn't get in or out anymore. So after nine months, we actually decided to surrender. This, this Asian pirate, he became a national hero here. And uh, we had to sign a declaration never, ever, ever to come back again. And, well, maybe you already realize this, this pirate, his name is Chen Kung. And I'm a visiting professor now at the University of Chen Kung. <laughs> it's a good thing, problems are over, we're friends again. And um, what brought me here in Taiwan is actually that's Shen Kung, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> what brought me here is a very interesting and eminent problem. That's our challenge for tomorrow, I think. Climate change. And as may, you may already know, Taiwan is among the most severely threatened places by climate change and other natural disasters. Now let's face it, Taiwan, we got typhoons, we got earthquakes, heat islands affecting cities and some smog. Maybe even a Godzilla ravaging by on the island sometimes. I haven't seen that one yet. But I think I'm a Dutch architect specialized in climate adaptation in the field of water. And I try to contribute here to make this place a better place. And to explain why it's a Dutch guy talking about this topic, we again go back 350 years ago. The Netherlands. You may know it about the windmills. And that's actually what we are. Um, a French philosopher said God created Earth, except for the Netherlands. The Dutch people created it themselves. That's quite true. Those pretty windmills have actually a function. They pump away water. The Netherlands used to be a swamp and some lakes and some sea. And from those places, we put the windmills, we took away all the water. And on the bottom of those lakes, we put up our farms. Those farms became our towns, and those towns became a country. And without windmills, dikes, and other artificial technologies, there would be no Dutch city left, in fact. So, we mastered this technology, the Dutch people. This technology I call Delta technology. I think it can be quite useful here as well. And you realize that windmills are wind energy. It's a sustainable way of using energy and getting energy. And through the centuries, we mastered this a lot. We work on sustainability. That's another skill I educate myself on. And the third one, I'm an architect. And I think architecture, Dutch architecture, is doing good around the world. Also here in Taiwan. Right now, in this moment, in Taipei, the National Performance Arts Center is uh, constructed by the design of Rem Koas, OMA. That's the Dutch architect. Also at this time, in the south, Kaohsiung, Meccano is building the National Performance Arts Center over there. Meccano, Franzi Nuben, another Dutch architect. I'm here in Tainan and I have a reputation to keep up here, it seems. So, I educated myself in those three skills. But what are the challenges we're facing here for tomorrow? The 21st century challenges. 
One big thing. Since 2010, urbanization. Half of the world population is actually living in cities. Those cities are living, or are all nearby the water, at the river, at the ocean, or the sea. And it brings me to the second challenge, climate change. Climate change means a lot of things are changing. Actually, the border between land and water is changing. It's changing all the time. We can't see that as a static thing. And since those cities are at the same location where the change between land and water is happening, we have to face this challenge as climate change. And we have to adapt to this. A third one, we're running out of resources. This planet is quite small for all of us. And we better start to reuse our resources in a more smart way. I'm not just talking about oil. I'm talking about wood forests. I'm talking about uh, fresh water. And what about space? Space for our cities. Space for agriculture. And even space for the other species who also inhabit this planet with us. We should be much more careful in dealing with those. So, I mentioned three of my skills. Three challenges I wanted to face. Back some years ago when I was a student, I want to bring this all together into my solution. And I took up this old dusty solution, I think. Houseboats or floating house. It used to be, uh, some decades ago, the living for the poor. What I did, I changed it into something more sexy. Floating pavilion. And, well, it was not just me who called it sexy. During my graduation, already I flew up and down to Shanghai to talk with the World Expo Committee for 2010 to see maybe we could build this there. And as a young student, I was very enthusiastic about that. The university was supporting me. The municipality of Rotterdam was supporting me because maybe they could build this at the expo to show their own city. All went very well until this difficult question came to me. Who's going to pay for it? I was at that time a student. I didn't know anything about money. Um, I didn't know architects were getting money for anything, are we? Um, and who's going to build for a building? I did not really had any answer on that question. But then I realized the municipality of Rotterdam was very enthusiastic about this thing. Why would a city build this building in Shanghai? Why wouldn't they build it in their own city? And actually, that's what happened. In 2010, my pavilion got finished. Of course, there came another budget cut from five balls. It went to three balls. I lost two of my balls in that process. But I think it's quite an accomplishment that something like this got built. Um, which used to be my graduation project. It's the icon of climate adaptation for Rotterdam. They also have their own vision on climate adaptation and reusing the space in their old harbors. It's about a thousand square meters large, 12 meters up. And after I finished this, it was time to start up more things. What will be my next step on it? After one building, what will we do next? This is the view from my office in Rotterdam. I can see a, a busy skyline with a lot of tall buildings, but now some more buildings are finished already. And quite an empty harbor. These are those old harbors. And those old harbors are quite common in, in, around the world. The harbors are too small for the big ships nowadays. They're in the city environment next to houses, so you can't put much in industry there. So what can you do with those harbors? I came up with the idea, why don't we make a small Venice in there? Houses, floating houses, safe from flooding, because it floats in a sustainable way. And some nice architecture. And I see this as an interesting solution. So it's not just for Rotterdam, but also think here about Tainan. Tainan used to be a harbor town. It still has a harbor. Maybe this is a nice place to put it there. I'm also talking about Kilung or Kaohsiung, big harbor places. And they are also in a redevelopment phase and what need to work on the image, this can be an interesting way to show what they are and what they can do. And I think it can be very interesting. You can have your car at your door, you can have your boat at your door. There are no construction sites here, because you build the house at another location and you just ship it in it all on its place. So there's no noise of construction and other stuff. It can be quite a lovely thing, just in the center of a lot of cities. What else have I been working on? Floating houses can do a lot. Um, look at those houses, the big houses for some rich people. You can see a column in the middle. 
and um, along the column the house can rotate to get optimal sunlight or maybe when it's uh, too hot you can block your back to the sun. My client was not really interested in the sun or electricity and sustainability story. He, I sold it to him, you see the red lady, when she walks by you can move your house to get a better view on her. <laughs> Whatever it takes to convince the client for me. But it's not just houses I'm thinking about. How about agriculture? Isn't agriculture taking more space than cities on the planet? And it's a common misunderstanding that plants actually need soil to grow on. Plants grow on uh, nu nutrition, fed by and by water. And if you make greenhouses like this, you can have a yield easily 20 times higher per square meter than you would build conventional agriculture. And it doesn't take any space on the land using the sea or the water now. You can imagine this is quite te technical and difficult to actually realize that. I've been working on this for a couple of years. And uh, I'm working on technologies to make this uh, product more sustainable, and more um, low cost and feasible. And actually working, of course. I got some patents on it. And already I can see there are a lot of cities and places around the world where the ground prices are very expensive. Landfills are not a good solution. And this is already a very solu uh, feasible solution. And it's a very interesting business case to make plants out of water, as you may can imagine. So these things I've been working on and continuously working on. And what are my next steps here in Taiwan? I'm a visiting professor at Chen Kung, as I mentioned. So I'm teaching the, the top architecture universities of the country. But also I'm going to see where it is possible to make phone buildings in Taiwan. And as a first step, I talk with uh, the government here in the south. The southwest coast has a and trapped from uh, land subsidence by overpumping groundwater uh, with sea level rise and the big storms um, flood risk is getting bigger here and um, to solve this dikes may not be a very good solution because of the extreme weather events and the earthquakes dikes are probably going to fail one, one time sooner or later so I thought on those fish farms can we make a floating house here what about to start with a small floating tea house? So in our next conversation on climate change or floating buildings, you can have a cup of tea in a floating house. So this is my vision. This is what I'm bringing here for Taiwan. I'm facing these challenges. It's a little bit slower than I expected. <laughs> and I hope this is the next step I can accomplish here in Taiwan. Thank you. I want to thank the organization of TEDx Tainan to share my ideas to the world. Shishini.